A Lost Perspective, Axis Monday, written by Ronnie O'Rourke. The purpose of this video is to find the true location and purpose of the island in Lost. My evidence includes SOS, Exposé, and the beginning of the end. Wikipedia articles about variable stars and the Axis Mundi itself. Connected stories such as Black Rock Island, Hamlet's Mill, and the Native American legend Fallen Star. There's also a Connect Four theory from five states. All links will be in the description. My arguments are, the island is a bridge linking the underworld and the higher realms. The island was originally located at the North Pole, under the celestial pole star of the time. According to Wikipedia, the term Axis Monday, also called the World Axis, World Pillar, or World Tree, was extended to refer to any mythological concept representing the connection between heaven and earth, or the higher and lower realms. The concept was introduced by Marcia Eliot in the 1950s. It is closely related to the concept of Umphalos, the navel of the world. Examples of the Axis Mundi introduced by ancient mythos includes trees and vines, a mountain, a column with smoke or fire, or products such as a staff, a ladder, a staircase, a steeple, a rope, or a pillar. Modern implications may be religious, a pagoda, a temple, a church, or secular, an obelisk, lighthouse, rocket, or skyscraper. We are all familiar with the Axis Mundi, whether we realize it or not. The motif of a vertical journey has been with us since childhood. We know that heaven is up and hell is down. We've heard of Jack and the Beanstalk and Rapunzel in her tower. The heroes of Greek mythology must descend to Hades before they can ascend to Mount Olympus. The biblical Jacob dreamed of a ladder on which angels traveled up and down, and the passengers on Oceanic 815 were on their way from the land down under to the city of angels. The island was the in-between place where they would battle treacherous monsters on the way to their final destination. Lost is filled with visual representations of the Axis Monday. A literal Jacob's Ladder leading to his cliffside cave, Jacob's Lighthouse, a ladder descends into most of the hatches, one must descend into the heart of the island on a rope, the Beechcraft sits atop a ladder of banyan tree roots. Wells dot the island, and one may fall down a well. Two series of underground tunnels exist below the island. The countdown clock flips over to spell Underworld when the button isn't pushed. We see photos of Mr. Cluck's locations around the world, each situated by an Axis Mundi, the Great Pyramid, Mount Fuji, and the Eiffel Tower. One of the most common symbols of the Axis Mundi is known as the World Tree, or Yggdrasil. The roots of the tree represent the underworld. The trunk of the tree is our world on earth. The branches of the tree represent the realm of the gods. Cutting down or destroying the tree represents some cataclysmic event and is followed by the building of a new world. Note that Saeed works for an organization called Build Our World, symbolized by a tree growing out of the top of a home, our planet Earth. Trees are constantly being destroyed on Lost. They may be chopped down, blown up, or uprooted. Both Assam and Eddy mention tree cutting as an occupation. The name Sawyer means woodcutter. Trees are climbed repeatedly, a visual representation of traversing the Axis Mundi. Kate frequently climbs trees to pick fruit, attach communication devices, and even to cut Charlie loose. She lands in a tree after the incident. Boone and Echo climb the roots to reach the beach craft. A cut tree is used to travel over the sonic fence. Bernard Nadler is found at the top of a tree after 815 crashes. This is a clever symbol of the pole star at the top of the Axis Mundi. Bernard means brave bear, and Nadler means needle maker. It was once believed that compass needles were pointing to Polaris which is in the constellation Ursa Minor, a lesser bear. 
This symbol is represented on Christmas trees. Banyan trees, considered sacred by some Pacific Island cultures, provide safety from the smoke monster. In some myths, the destruction of the Axis Monday is depicted as a millstone falling off its axis, necessitating the reconstruction of the mill. Ancient people saw the stars in the night sky circling around the stationary pole star, and conceived of the sky as a great turning millstone, with pole star as the central axis. Daniel Faraday explains this idea in modern terms. The island is a record on a turntable. The spindle is the axis around which it turns. When the frozen donkey wheel comes off its axis, the losties begin skipping through time. We see vinyl records on turntables a number of times, reinforcing this image. Records are played by Desmond and other people in the Swan. Pierre Chang plays a Willie Nelson song. Young Emily Locke spins a Buddy Holly record. The island itself is repeatedly called a rock. Rocks are thrown, slingshotted, dropped from above, used to almost make a sign, wielded as bludgeons, used as significant and dangerous pieces of scenery, slyly used to describe a musical genre, cleverly used to name a ship, and even hurled from space to destroy chicken joints. What do rocks have to do with the Axis Mundi? Another term for Axis Mundi is navel of the world, or umphalus in Greek. This is a special egg-shaped stone, often shown covered with a net, used to mark the center of the world. It's the navel, or source. In Greek mythology, the titan Kronos hears a prophecy that one of his children will overthrow him, as he has done to his own father. So each time his wife, Rhea, delivers a child, Kronos swallows it. Finally, Rhea has had enough, and hatches a plan. When Zeus is born, she has the child taken away to be raised in secret. She gives Kronos a rock wrapped in swaddling clothes, which he swallows without question. Years later, Zeus returns, and the first thing he does is force Kronos to throw up all the contents of his stomach. Out comes the rock, followed by Zeus's immortal siblings. They defeat Kronos and become the Olympian gods. Zeus then wants to mark the center of the world, so he releases two eagles from the opposite sides of the earth. They cross paths over Delphi. To mark the spot, Zeus hurls the rock that Cronus had swallowed down to earth. This is the Omphalos. Lost retells this story in SOS, with Bernard and Rose as Cronos and Rhea. Rose chides Bernard for questioning food that has fallen from the sky. Just eat it. Bernard wants to use black rocks to build an SOS sign, but, like Cronus, has a management problem. Bernard, in flashback, tells Rose to rock it out when the car is stuck in snow. Bernard proposes with a rock, a diamond. Bernard takes Rose to Ayer's Rock, where she hatches a plan to deceive him. He swallows the lie. Rose confesses. She brings him dinner, covered in cloth. She says, when you're sick and you have got something inside you that doesn't belong there, you can feel it. The whole Umphalos story is there, in an episode filled with rocks. Kronos will later be called Father Time. He is old, bearded, and carries a scythe. Take a look at Bernard when he's last seen.